What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com back with another Blender beginner modeling tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to model a soda can inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so we're going to start by importing an image. So we're going to go to the front view and we're just going to do a shift A and we're going to go down to image and click on reference and we just want to go find the image that we've downloaded. So you can really find any soda can image on the internet in order to work with here. And so we're going to bring this in, maybe scale it down a little bit, move it down and then we're good to go. And so now what we want to do is we want to start by adding a cylinder. So we're just going to do a shift A and add a cylinder right here. And we're going to move it up. We'll scale it in so that it kind of matches here. And we'll also scale it along the Z axis so that it has about the height of our soda can. And so one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the Z key and I'm going to go to wireframe mode for right now because I'm going to start adding some different edge loops in here. So we want to select our uh, soda can, hit the tab key, and now we're going to start adding some edge loops. So I'm going to do a control R to add an edge loop and I'm basically going to add some detail about where the different parts and pieces of this can are. So basically the areas where the can kind of changes. So I've added a couple loop cuts here and what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start scaling some of those in. So I'm going to do an alt click. When I do an alt click what I'm doing is I'm selecting the entire edge loop around here and I'm just going to scale it in and then I'm going to move it down just like this. And again Notice that what we're doing is we're adding detail in here by adding edge loops. So again, I can just kind of scale this in a little bit right here. We'll do an alt click. I'm going to move this up a little bit and I'm going to scale it in. I'm going to do an alt click again to select this loop. We're going to scale that one in as well. And so remember that our plan here is we're going to take this whole thing and we're just going to subdivide it. So eventually we're going to come in here if we look at this in solid mode and we're going to use the uh, subdivide smooth or subdivision surface tool in order to subdivide this to make more of a smooth shape. But you can see how there's a lot of work we need to do before we can really do that. And so what we want to do is let's go ahead and let's work on the top real quick. So I'm just going to do an alt click. We're just going to offset this or we're going to tap the E key and then tap the S key to extrude scale this in. Then we're going to extrude this down with the E key. So and one thing you may want to think about doing is you may want to find an image for the top of a can as well. So let's go ahead and import that image. So I'm going to go to a top view and I'm just going to tab back into object mode. I'm going to do a shift A and I'm going to add a reference image. So in this case we'll add our soda can top and we'll kind of scale this down so that it fits inside of our object. And you may want to move it up on the Z axis. So you may want to move it up like this so that you can kind of see through it or see it right here in order to get the sizing correct. So we're going to go ahead and we'll size this to about right here. So we've got an image in here that we can work with. And I'm going to move it down a little bit more so it's kind of below this but we can use this in order to kind of figure out where everything needs to go. We're going to select this, go back into edit mode and then we're going to extrude this down a little bit more but then we're going to scale it in. So then we'll scale it again or we'll do an extrude scale so ES to extrude this and then we'll move that back up. And so basically what we've done, if we go back into solid mode for a second, is we've created the little recess that's going to go right here. And so what I don't want to do at the moment is I don't really want to model this out. What I want to do instead is I want to apply this image as a texture on the top. We may model the top tab for right now, but for now let's focus on our can shape. So if we take our images and we hide them for a second, and we go back to solid mode, Right now what's going to happen if we apply that subdivision surface modifier, so if we put this in here, subdivision surface, you can see how we're getting a bunch of like weird distortion in here. So your can all of a sudden isn't doing what it's supposed to do. And so there's a couple different things we can do about this. 
So if we look at this, you can see how we have our shape kind of the way that we want it, but we need to add some more edge loops in order to add some detail. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're just gonna do a control R, and you can see how if I leave this active, you can see if I add an edge loop right here, then I add an edge loop right here, now this is a much smoother transition and it kind of fits what this can does. So it actually fits the shape of the can in here. I'm gonna turn the subdivision off in this view just for a second. Then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna add a little bit of detail right here. By adding an edge loop, a little bit of detail right here. So now, if we look at this, Again, we're getting a much more like can shape in here. So you can see how as I subdivide this, I'm getting it even more. So that allowed us to kind of create this detail here. The one thing we want to do is on the top, we probably want to add an edge loop right in the middle that we can move up just a little bit in order to still give us that kind of rounded look on the top. So you can see how now we've got a nice top view right here. We're not going to worry too much about the middle piece for right now. So now let's go in and let's look at the bottom. Notice again I'm just hitting the tab key in order to kind of move into and out of this uh, move into and out of this view. And so again you can turn off the real-time modifier by clicking on the little monitor here. So that allows you to come in here and make some changes. Whoops without the modifier getting in the way. So you can see how again, I'm gonna move this up, and then I'm gonna add an edge loop right here in order to give this a little bit more detail. So then I'm gonna take this, move it up as well to kind of align it. Then we'll add an edge loop right here. And notice how again, I can kind of flip into and out of this view by clicking on the little monitor. So I'm gonna scale this in I'm going to do an alt click and I'm also going to scale this in because again we want all of this to kind of match up and line up and so all I'm doing is I'm just using the scale tool and the move tool in order to get everything to align in here so I'm just adding detail like this then we'll turn this on maybe tab out of edit mode a little bit just to kind of get a look at what's happening in here. So all we're doing is we're just adding those little detail edges to these edge loops in order to make this shape. So now what we need to do is we need to work on the bottom of our object. And you could either come in here and add another image like we did before, or you can just kind of wing it, which is what we're gonna do right here. So um, you definitely could find an image of this, but for what we're trying to do, we can go ahead and we can turn this off and basically add a little bit of detail. So I'm just gonna tap the S key and the E key, or sorry, I'm gonna tap the E key and then the S key. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna scale this or move this inside, and then we're gonna extrude this up a little bit. So we're gonna extrude it up and we're gonna scale it in. And so what that does is that gives us more of the curved base. If we turn our subdivision modifier back in here like a can has. And so one thing that's a little bit um, frustrating about this, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn this image off, is when our subdivision modifier turns on in here, you get this pinched look. So the reason you get the pinched look in here is because this is not a quad shape, right? So when we subdivide, we want everything to be quads and this is not a quad. And so one way that we can kind of fix that is we can actually do an ES to extrude this in. We can extrude this like all the way in to about this point right here. And so what that means is this took all of these shapes and extruded them in, and they're all quads. Meaning now if we were to turn this back on, everything's a lot smoother up to about this point right here. And we're not really gonna pay too much attention to this central point anyway, so that really doesn't matter all that much. And then we can just do a G, Z, in order to move this up a little bit. So now if I tab back into object mode, you can see how that gives me kind of the rough shape of my can inside a blender. And notice that it'll smooth that even more if you up your subdivisions in your viewport, but do note that that is going to take up more processing power and create more geometry that Blender has to render. Not a huge deal with Blender, but it is something to be aware of. All right, so then one other thing is we're just gonna add an edge loop down here. So I'm gonna turn my subdivision off for a second, and I'm just gonna add an edge loop down here we're gonna slide it out to about this point. 
and move it up just a little bit. And then we're gonna do the same thing right here, just to make sure that we have that detail when our subdivision modifier goes to work in here. All right, so now we've got our general can set up. So let's go in and let's work on the top a little bit. So the top can be a little bit tricky. Um, what we wanna do is we wanna create the recess that goes on the top um, from our image right here. So we're gonna hold the Z key to go into wireframe mode. And then I'm gonna turn my subdivision back off for now. And what we wanna do is we wanna add this little piece of detail right here. And so we're not gonna model out a hole in this situation. Probably we're just gonna go ahead and create the recess that goes around this edge here. And then we'll just apply this as a texture to the top to kind of finalize this. But what we wanna do for right now is we want to select our, um, we wanna select our cylinder or our can, go into edit mode by hitting the tab key. And then we're just going to do an alt click in order to select this loop. And one little trick here is you can see how right now you're seeing the bottom of the can um, through this and it's kind of distracting while you're trying to work on this. So you can look at this from a straight up and down standpoint. Um, you could probably go into solid mode, but then you wouldn't be able to see your image anymore. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go into our view and we're just gonna turn our clipping down to something like 0.2. And so basically what that means is our camera will now clip anything out that's beyond this 0.2 meters. So you can see if I click and drag this, this is gonna adjust that, but if I bring that back to something like 0.2 um, or something low, then it's gonna clip out all the wires from down below. There may be another way to do this, but this is working fine for what I'm trying to do right here. And so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna tap the E key and the S key in order to extrude this in. And I'm gonna extrude this in just a little bit so that the so that the edges down here kind of follow this curve. And then we're just gonna tap the one key to go into vertex editing mode. And we're just gonna start editing our vertices so that they align with this curve. So you can see how you can just, uh, you can either do both of them at once. So if you do both of them at once, then you can select them both like this, you can move them up using the move tool. So I just tap the G key, then you can scale them in just like this. And you wanna make sure you tap Shift Z so that this isn't scaling these down on the front axis. You want these to just scale in, not scale down. See how this causes some problems with my geometry. So make sure when you're moving these in, you do a Shift Z in order to make sure when you scale this, it's only scaling it on the X and Y axes, not the Z axes. And so we're gonna move our image down a little bit and then we're gonna go into top view. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna keep aligning these edges. So I'm just gonna hit the tab key. I'm gonna turn my clipping back to what it was before. And then we'll just keep moving these vertices. So I'm gonna move this up and I'm gonna scale these in. All right, and so what I think I'm gonna do for this is I'm actually gonna drag in another window. So I'm just gonna mouse up to here and click and drag. in order to bring a new window in. So, and I can make a specific video about creating those extra windows, but what I wanna do is I just wanna create a window where the view is on the front view. Kinda like this. And then another view where I've got kind of the isometric view right here. And all I want to do is I just wanna make sure that when I'm doing this, that I'm actually keeping these on the same plane. So this is just me watching the vertices as I'm creating them. But I'm just gonna work through this real quick. Notice each one of these has its own focal length settings and camera settings. All right, so now we have this tab kind of modeled out the way that we want it. If we go back to uh, if we go back to uh, shaded mode, you can, or solid mode, you can see how now we have this face in here um, the way that we'd like it to be. And this is all quads around the outside. So if I was to toggle the subdivision in here, you can see how the smoothing on this stays kind of the same. So the central point gets a little bit weird. But now what we want to do is we want to extrude this down a little bit. So we just want to come in here and select this face and then we want to extrude it down just a bit and then scale that in just a little bit 
So we'll do a Shift Z in order to make sure that it isn't scaling down, it's just scaling in. And then we'll just extrude scale this in again, and we'll do a Shift Z. And we'll extrude this back up just a little, not very much. And then we'll scale it in just a little bit more. And that may be a little bit too much. Let's kind of take a look at this uh, result. I think I'm gonna go ahead and rejoin these windows. So I'm just gonna right click on this, click join areas, and then we'll right click on this. Click join areas. And then we're back to our regular view. So we'll go back to solid view real quick and let's just toggle this subdivision on just to see what we've got here. I think that gives us a pretty good result. Um, we could definitely come back in here and add a couple edge loops to make this a little bit sharper, um, but we're in pretty good shape, I think, um, on this piece. So you could also come in here and do an alt click to select this edge loop and you can move it up and down in order to control the strength of this result. All right, so now that we have this shape roughed out, what I wanna do is I wanna take this image and I wanna move it back up. And then I wanna model out the little tab that's gonna be right here. And so the way that we're gonna do that is we're just gonna insert a new shape. So we'll do a Shift A. And I'm actually gonna do a Shift S and put my cursor to selected first. Then I'll do a Shift A. And there's a few different ways you can do this. I'm gonna start by just adding a plane and then scaling it down. So I'm gonna scale it down just like this. I'm gonna move it over. And then I'm just gonna select my top view and I'm gonna go into edit mode and I'm just gonna start editing this. So we're just going to select these two vertices, bring them together. And then all I'm doing is I'm just tapping the E key with these vertices selected in order to move this. And then I'll rotate this to kind of align with this curve, just like this. So all I'm doing is I'm just extruding this out in order so that it can follow this curve. And then once I've extruded this down down here, I can just select this and then just tap the F key in order to fill this in with a face. So you can see how this face has now been filled in. So now what we need to do is we need to add some detail over here. So probably what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to right click on these and do a dissolve vertices. Um, because really what I want is I want these two vertices right here. And we're just gonna extrude this by tapping the E key. And then you can scale them down just like this. So you can kind of mess around with this in order to get the best result. Um, so in this situation though, I'm just moving these around so that they follow this curve. And then we'll select them both by doing a shift click and we'll just do an extrude and scale them down again. And then we'll do the same thing. Where we'll select these edges and tap the F key. So now all we need to do is we just need to fill this shape in right here. And so to do that, I'm gonna go in here and tap the two and select these vertices. Then we'll do an E, S, Shift Z. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to extrude, scale these in. And I may scale these back out just a bit. All right, so now what we've got is we've got our shape right here. Well, now we need to make this little circular piece, which can be a little bit tricky. Um, we ought to be okay though. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna select all of these edges and we're just gonna tap the E key and then the S key in order to extrude scale them in and make sure to do a shift Z to lock these along that axis. And so basically what we wanna do is we wanna extrude these in. And I'm actually gonna scale them out just a little bit right here. And then I'm gonna do an E, S, shift Z in order to extrude scale them in a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move these up and then now I'm gonna take these edges and I'm gonna extrude them up in order to create the rest of this little circle that goes on top of this tab. So I'm just going to select my edges, do an extrude, rotate on the Z axis, 
And I'm just going to do this all the way around the circle. So just E, G, so R, Z, then we're going to extrude this again. We're going to rotate it a little bit. We're just going to keep doing this until we get close to this edge right here. So we're going to do an extrude, rotate. You can scale that one in just a little bit. And then, once you've selected these, tap the F key in order to fill in a face between the vertices. So then, depending on what you want to do, you can either kind of scale this in a little bit more, or you can just tap the F key in order to add a face on the inside of this. But then we're just going to tap the A key, and we're just going to extrude this whole thing up. So when we extrude this whole thing up, you can see how the whole thing, except for the central point, is made up of quads. Well then, we can just come in here and we can just add a subdivision surface modifier. And we can subdivide this, and you can see how it gives us this nice tab on the top. And so now we can turn this off, and you can see how we have a soda can in here with the tab on the top. And so we will talk probably in the next video about how to add the textures to this. So I'm going to break this up into multiple videos because it's getting a little bit long. But this should give you a good idea of how to get started using subdivision modeling in order to create a shape inside a blender. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did you uh, follow this workflow? Is there anything I could improve on? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.